Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. Thanks for inviting me into your home, your long-haul truck. RV, camper, taxi, your parents' well-appointed basement with the simulated wood paneling, electric fireplace, and the painting of dogs playing poker, your loft, that greasy spoon just off the interstate, and your cabin in the woods. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM, the very best in late-night talk radio. I'm Richard Serrett, and tonight, this morning, I'm coming to you live for my home studio in old Thornhill, just north of Toronto. And it feels so good to be back in the coast air chair after two months away. I spent almost the entire summer in Greece with the mighty Aphrodite and our twin boys. And we had a wonderful time. And if you've not been to Greece, I highly, highly recommend it. The food is terrific. The people are warm. The scenery is breathtaking. But I tell you what, I really missed a lot while I was away. In late July, we had three military veterans testifying in Congress in a highly anticipated hearing on UFOs, including a former Air Force intelligence officer who claimed the U.S. government has operated a secret multi-decade reverse engineering program of recovered uh, vessels. He also said the U.S. has recovered non-human biologics from alleged crash sites. I wish I was here to talk about that. Uh, after a lengthy absence, the Loch Ness Monster appears to have re-emerged with a number of recent sightings. Loads of political intrigue, of course. In the entertainment world, while I was away, we lost a number of rock legends. Robbie Robertson, former Eagle Randy Meisner, and yesterday we lost Jimmy Buffett. Better Call Saul star, Mark Margolis, and Paul Rubens best known for playing Pee Wee Herman, died on July 30th at the age of 70. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic this summer, not surprisingly, Wiltshire was named once again as England's crop circle hotspot. In fact, there have been 380 crop circles observed in the county since 2005, averaging around 20 per year according to data collected by Bonus Finder from the UK Crop Circles website. This is over seven times more than in second-placed Hampshire, where just 51 formations have been seen over the last 18 years. Crop Circle enthusiasts have reportedly attributed the strange formations to ley lines, with some suggesting they're ancient pathways aiding navigation, while others believe they're extraterrestrial messages cautioning humanity. And so we begin tonight's edition of Coast with that very subject, crop circles. These mysterious and beautiful formations that have been appearing in farmers' fields for centuries. People have seen crop circles created by a, a ball of light in less than 15 seconds, bending the plants without damage, altering the electromagnetic field and soil, all, all while creating intricate geometric shapes, even fractals. What are they? Signposts created by extraterrestrials, expressions of Earth's consciousness, a call to action from interdimensional light beings, a hoax, a conspiracy. Coming up in hours one and two, two renowned crop circle researchers, Patty Greer, an award-winning filmmaker who has made eight documentary films about crop circles and has visited over 100 crop circles in the UK, and Penny Kelly, a former student and associate of the late William Lefty Levengood, one of the world's preeminent crop circle researchers. Patty Greer and Penny Kelly discuss the enigma of crop circles next. Welcome to the Audio Imaginarium. Come on in, weary traveler, hang your cloak on a peg, grab a stool, and come gather around the fire. There are stories to be told, and you are among friends. 
I'm Richard Serrett, and this is Coast to Coast AM. Why don't you stay a while? Patty Greer is one of the hardest working UFO filmmakers in the world. She completed eight full feature UFO or crop circle movies, rather, in the last 10 years that received eight prestigious awards. Her movies offer unrelenting, explosive footage and evidence about the crop circle phenomenon. Patty is bold, intuitive, and telepathic, which is how she co-produced and filmed eight movies with other dimensional beings without any training, research, or team. Patty spent nine weeks of summers 2007 and 2008 laying in UK crop circles and had visited more than 100 crop circles personally over the years. Patty Greer, welcome back to Coast. How are you? Wonderful, Richard. Thank you, and welcome back from a summer in Greece. How amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Penny Kelly is an author, teacher, publisher, lecturer, spiritual coach, consultant, and naturopathic physician. In 1979, Patty or Penny experienced a full spontaneous awakening of Kundalini that completely changed her life. A tool and process engineer for Chrysler Corporation at the time, she eventually left Chrysler and returned to school to study the brain, consciousness, perception, cognition, intelligence, and intuition. In 1988, After moving to Lawton in southwest Michigan, she began teaching in a dilapidated old barn that eventually became Lily Hill Farm. The barn is now both a learning center and a busy B&B. For 15 years, uh, Penny was involved in scientific research and investigations into crop circles, consciousness, and plasma physics at Pinelandia Laboratory near Ann Arbor, Michigan, As the student and later the associate of Dr. William Levengood, Penny holds a degree in humanistic studies from Wayne State University, a degree in naturopathic medicine from Clayton College of Natural Health, and continues her research into consciousness and perception. Penny Kelly, welcome to Coast. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Richard, and thank you to everyone out there who happens to be listening. Uh, Patty, let me start with you, because um, the, uh, quite an accomplishment all on its own, uh, visiting more than 100 crop circles in the United Kingdom. I mentioned once again this summer, uh, Wiltshire uh, named the crop circle hotspot of the uh, of the United Kingdom. Not a big surprise there, but tell me about your history of visiting so many crop circles. You know, once you enter your first crop circle, you'll be hooked. <laughs> That's what I can say. I had no idea what I was getting into, but it is so physically tactile that you can't pretend you don't feel it unless you don't feel anything. And um, so my very first formation, it was raining, it was cold, and the wheat was wet up to my hips. And I was with one of my kids and a woman that was a stranger I had met in Glastonbury, turned out to be the Archdruidess of Stonehenge. And the three of us walked into this formation. None of us had ever been in any crop circles. And all of a sudden, it was like entering a different realm of reality. The little hairs went up on our arms and hair on the top of your back of your neck, top of your head standing up. And the electromagnetic field, I think, was extremely enhanced. And all of us just looked at each other with big eyes and silently nodded. And then entered the formation. And in my opinion, there's no way in hell that that was a fake formation because of the intense frequencies and the precision of the laid wheat. It was meticulous. And I um, found myself in a few more crop circles, but returned alone in 2007 to go face down for the summer without any hesitation. And I didn't miss a crop circle. Um, I came back every year um, other than a couple in the middle where I felt like I was a little too marked as a female with a camera in the formations. And then I started getting bizarre threats from mean people. And I took a year off 2009, but got right back to work in 2010, started winning a lot of awards and realized this phenomenon had a lot more for people to learn than meets the eye. Uh, Penny, how about your first visit to a crop circle? Did you have the sense inside a crop circle that it has, I don't know, some kind of a supernatural power? You know, I've never been in a crop circle itself, not a, not one that was 
not destroyed. You know what I mean? We right. I went to Stonehenge. We visited a crop circle, but it had been already mowed. The farmer was very, like, don't come anywhere near us. Um, and so we just stood outside and looked, et cetera. But the crop circle materials have their own energy. It's very similar to some of the materials that have been taken from ET landing sites and and what you what you notice if you, it's I love Patty's description you know that you that it's tactile that you can feel the difference um, and if you can't then you you're not feeling anything that is actually um, a pretty good description of the kind of hair raising experience literally it raises the hairs on your arms. Um, and on your head, that whole goosebumpy feeling is what you get when you're working with those materials. And it's almost as if they impart their own kind of intuition, their own kind of consciousness, their own feeling state to you. And so it is remarkable. Uh, uh, Patty, uh, for those who've never uh, been inside a crop circle, and I guess it was maybe what the early '90s, where um, it was a Doug and Dave. These two uh, gentlemen st- strapped some boards to the bottom of their feet and started, you know, stomping around and crushing the barley or the wheat and and creating these fake crop circles. And of course, the media went crazy. Aha! You know, we've we've solved the crop circle mystery. It's a big hoax. But what's the difference? How can you recognize a hoax? Um, a Doug and Dave creation, let's say, and the real deal, an authentic crop formation, an agroglyph. Right. Uh, Again, I would say by feel, by frequency, by energy, if you're lucky enough to go and be in the formation. Of all the crop circles I went in, I'm going to say that most of them were real. Most of them had enhanced frequencies. And most of them were extremely meticulous. And when I say meticulous, later in the summer, um, for instance, as you're looking at images of crop circles, if the image is green, the crop circle is May, June, early July. It's early season. The wheat is supple and fresh. Late July, August, you're going to start seeing brown and tan as the wheat dries out and gets very brittle. So once it's brittle, for the circle makers, herself, to lay the wheat and bend it as she does, I say she, the earth, um, what you're going to see is an incredible miracle of bent wheat in nodes that are blown out, which means the wheat has grown a bubble, and it has grown that from liquid inside, heating up to the point where All of the crop has bent in a particular direction, and in order to do that, the wheat was enhanced from the inside out, and the nodes, the elbows, the bending places where there's a growth, and then it stops, and it grows a node, and then it continues to grow. Those nodes are where we get the bend to create the images that we can see from the air. On the ground, you can't tell it's a butterfly or a dragonfly, or an, a pile of fractals in Fibonacci sequence. When you're in the air, you can, of course, take photos, videos, images, and see what you're looking at, but on the ground you can't. You can only feel and see the immaculate or sloppy nature. When you're in a crop circle made by humans, in my opinion, I don't feel anything, and there were very few of those. Um, when right. you're looking from the air and you see a human-made crop circle, they're sloppy. The lines aren't meticulous. And there's a big difference to my eye when I'm looking at lines, circles, triangles, shapes. It's either meticulous or it isn't. It's either real or it's fake. Where's the money going? <laughs> fake crop circles. Doug and Dave were well-paid, extremely well-promoted, and BS. There's a TV show, Ancient A. I won't say the whole name, but they paid a team 
in 2019 to make a crop circle for the cameras because, oh, wait, their excuse was our schedule is making us come before the season. So they hired a team through my friend, the research center owner, Charles Mallet, And he said, I can't yak right now. I've got ancient A coming to film. And I was like, what do you mean? It's May 3rd. He said, yeah, well, I hired a team. They asked me to. This, in my opinion, is not what I want to see. The BBC, God bless their soul, huh? Um, the Guardian, all they do is post, look over there. They're all fake. And in my opinion, those people are the ones being paid by a much larger organization than I thought was hiding crop circles when William Levengood and Penny Kelly were exposing the incredible science and then years later, a couple of years later after Lefty died, um, I was brought into the picture, but I guess he knew somehow that I would be the one. And I hooked up with Penny Kelly in an absolute miraculous event. And then we realized, oh, my God, you've got all the material wisdom. I've got all the physical, been in the crop circle wisdom. And together we made my final film, which exposed the real science that most people on Earth have no idea how crop circles are really made. And it wasn't until Penny Kelly and I got together uh, in her home, and then we went to the lab twice for William Levengood's planning of his wake a year after he died. And, oh, my God, it was all there. Everything is in crop circle diaries. Thanks to Penny Kelly and William Levengood, the truth has come out. And people need to know this is an incredible Earth phenomenon. It's not a UFO. It's not unidentified. It's a crop circle. It's not All right. Well, well, uh, Penny, we should talk a little bit about uh, Dr. Levengood. Um, First of all, for those not familiar with his work, who was he? And what what did he discover uh, about uh, crop circles, about the soil, about the seeds? Uh, Let's get into all of that. Okay. Um, well, he was a, a physicist that came out of the University of Michigan. There's a whole story about that. Um, and and I tell that story in my book. He had asked me to write about his work, and I didn't think I could do justice to the science, so I said no and no again and again and again. And then one day he made this passionate speech about Look, it takes 50 years for science and information in the scientific world to get down to the population where it could be doing some good. And he was talking one day, um, and I, I realized in that conversation that I really needed to learn about the science he was talking about, which was plasma physics. And and so I said to him, I I. I will, he said, let me teach you. And I said, okay, I will become your student. And we set up a regular weekly, even bi-weekly conversation in which he went through every bit of his research. He had been, before he got into the crop circle thing, one of the premier agricultural physicists studying seeds and plants. And he also was recognized by, I think, the National Science Foundation for his work on stress fracturing in glass. And he had been invited to speak, and he had a number of articles in various journals, science, nature, oh gosh, a whole bunch of them, Um, like 40-some papers, 43 papers in various places. So I became his student and began to learn about what he was doing. Now, mind you, when I started, I was kind of like those people out there in the world who really thought it's probably just a hoax. I didn't really know about crop circles. I didn't really care. I wasn't paying attention. Um, I had never heard of animal mutilations. I was avoiding the whole ET thing like crazy because it made me nervous. And so... It was quite a, a jump for me to say, okay, um, let us let me understand what you're talking about. And he started right from the beginning. And what he had discovered was that there was this unusual or unknown form of energy 
that he called charge density pulses and I and eventually became charge density plasma. And what that is is the energy that is released from a body or a substance, doesn't matter whether it's a rock or a soil. Pen, or uh, Penny, or... sorry, uh, Penny, pardon the interruption. i got to jump in here because we've got the, uh, the break coming up at the bottom of the hour. We'll pick up on this, discussing the enigma, enigma of crop circles on Coast to Coast AM. Welcome back. The official site of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office will make sightings, photographs, and documents of UFOs easy to view. In an intriguing move, the Department of Defense announced yesterday that it had launched an official website dedicated to providing the public with information concerning Aero and its efforts to understand and resolve unidentified anomalous phenomena. The new site promises to make reports, photographs, and videos regarding resolved cases available to the public as and when they are declassified, as well as to provide information and answers to commonly asked questions more easily available. It'll also provide a tool to enable government employees and servicemen to report their own UFO sightings, something that that has up until now been problematic for them to do. You can read more about this story in the In the News section up at coasttocoastam.com. Back to more of my conversation with Patty Greer and Penny Kelly as we unravel the mystery of crop circles right here on Coast to Coast AM. Richard Serrett coming to you live from Old Thornhill, just north of Toronto. Crop Circle filmmaker Patty Greer is with us and the uh, former student and associate of Dr. William Lefty Levengood uh, is with us as well. Uh, Penny, um, so you were saying before the break that Dr. Levengood attributed crop circle formation to uh, these um, ion plasmas. Um, how, how do they work exactly? How do they, how do they, how do they create these incredibly intricate designs? Well, um, the thing that was, the thing that was really the core of his work was the discovery of the CDP pulses, which then led to, uh, a big uh, understanding, I guess I'll call it, of how plasma works. And in a nutshell, when you bring it down to what's happening at the level of science, every change that that occurs in our base energy, and that's, you know, anybody's energy, whether it's a person, a planet, an animal, a you know, stalk of wheat, a change happens, and that is that impacts all of the other frequencies out there. And what he discovered was that there were patterns of, they were big plasma systems, big plasma systems, and they were composed of microwaves. They had electric fields, and those electric fields would create these ion electron avalanches that would affect the seeds and the plants um, that would grow from the, the the seeds produced from those plants, if hit at a particular time, would grow amazingly well in the future. These same big plasma systems had ionized gases that were in motion, but it was stable kind of motion. It wasn't wild and crazy. It was like a, a it already had the pattern of that that crop circle in that plasma system. There was also some convective turbulence. Convective, most of the convection was vortex uh, kind of motion, like a tornado. Um, And then all of that would be interacting with the Earth's electric fields and different, different continents on our planet have different amounts and different types of electric fields moving across them and then there were magnetic fields. Whenever you have an electric current, you create an electromagnetic field around it, and that electromagnetic field develops um, filaments, and those filaments then collect particles, and those particles create patterns. And, um, and then on top of all of that, there were thermal gradients both inside the plasma system and outside the system. And the result of the plasma system would be to um, hit a field, it would would 
take the shape of whatever was in the plasma pattern. The, the pattern is actually in the plasma. What you see is how things get created, how geometric forms get created. And plants are, and so are people, geometric forms. And um, and the all of those factors would affect the wheat or the corn or whatever it was. A little harder to get a you have to have high energy in order to get a crop circle in corn because corn is so heavy and sturdy. Right, right. I mean, it it sounds so incredibly complex, but but Patty, uh, over to you. This is just not natural happenstance. Uh, you know, plasma meeting energy fields uh, and so forth. It must be guided by some intelligence, don't you think? I absolutely do. And I think this is going to be the hardest part for your audience to wrap their head around. The earth is conscious. The earth is alive. And we refer to her as female, Gaia, the earth. And what we have is a consciousness, in my opinion, coming out of the earth in a language that all people can understand. So the crop circles, I believe, are messages from the earth herself, warnings to the people, gifts to the people, messages to not only the people of earth, but every entity or other dimensional being flying over the earth or around the earth. Now, most of them are being found, we're saying, in Wiltshire, England, but I think the point is, They've been documented the most in Wiltshire, England. They've been found all over the planet. It's just that other countries don't talk about it as much, and it doesn't get documented. But I assure you, they've been found in a lot of places. And when we look at the language that the Earth speaks, a lot of times it's a pictogram, a picture of something you can recognize. We've had mathematical Uh, You call them fractals. I call them mathematics, where we've had the Mandelbrot crop circle and series of spirals of Fibonacci sequence, all different kinds of codes. Morris code has been seen in crop circles. We've seen atomic energy codes in crop circles. We've also seen more than any other aspect, in my opinion, is the mandalas. And a mandala is a sacred geometry pattern. That if you put a dot in the middle, it's a mirror image all the way out to the sides. What people didn't realize about so many sacred geometric formations was that if you spin the image, they light up and turn into, in my opinion, again, I'm saying this because a lot of people haven't heard this before, but you're seeing physical manifestations of perhaps um, schematics of lighting systems on ships, uh, propulsion systems on ships, or on other devices of motion. But crop circles are not accidental, and I think many of them are fully intentional directly from the mother to all of us on this planet. And I've been listening, and I feel so blessed to be looking at so many crop circles over the years because... I feel like I've seen everything coming that we're in right now. Uh, Penny, do you, uh, do you concur with uh, Patty's theory that it's um, the earth's consciousness interacting with these plasma vortices, or do you believe that there may be as many people do uh, a connection to extraterrestrials? Well, I'm going to say yes and yes. (laughs) Okay, Um, I think it's really important to understand that one of the things that um, we did in the lab was to be able to um, document and prove that plasma responds directly to consciousness. And that uh, uh, that doesn't have to be local consciousness. That can be something happening half a world away. So that's, you know, plasma is responding to consciousness then you're, everybody is a plasma being. We, every human, every plant, every animal is a collection of plasmas. The heart is one plasma. The liver is another. 
um, plasma formation. The eyeballs are still other plasma formations, your hair, your toenails, whatever. Um, they're all different plasma patterns that work together. You can affect those by your own consciousness. And when you're negative all the time and when you worry all the time, it shows. It takes, you know, you take yourself down. So, yes, and as far as ETs are concerned, um, I think that some of the uh, crop circles have come from people who have utilized that consciousness to send us a message because we were paying attention at that time. And I think there's a bigger message behind all of that even uh, that we're being invited into discovering that there are other forms of energy that can be harnessed. Um, and I think if we take those crop circles and we match those up to cymatic patterns that are formed when certain frequencies are played, I think we could begin to discover that we're being shown a bunch of frequencies that would be useful in moving into what I'm going to call the next dimension or the next level of evolution of the human being. And in fact, one of the messages that we got from uh, Linda, Linda Moulton Howe was working with Lefty and, and bringing all kinds of samples and things in. One of the messages that uh, she got was, that the uh, that Lefty was, we were working and he was working with some stuff out of South America from a guy named Urander. And Urander had been picked up by ETs. They had said to him, um, hey, tell people we're, we're going to pick you up for two weeks. Let your family know you're going to be gone. We have some things we want to tell you and show you, et cetera. Um, we want people to know that we are here so we can move about freely. And so they picked him up, and, um, and they, the, we got some samples of the sheet that, was, uh, that he was laying on because it was burned. His outline was burned into the sheet. Uh, and that sheet, uh, I guess, um, that became sort of a doorway into the message. Linda, the whole thing that we were dealing with was how did they do that? How did they affect these fibers, this row of fibers in the sheet? And the one right next to it was not affected at all. And it wasn't burned. It was it was altered in some way that we couldn't figure out. And so um, Linda piped up after, you know, talking about this whole question. And she said, oh, I forgot to tell you. The message that came with these materials was that it is time for you to begin to understand how to use frequencies. And plasmas are just a whole bunch of frequencies of different sorts doing different things. Um, the frequencies of the microwave and the electric fields and, you know, all, all the ionized gases, those are different kinds of material that are formed from different kinds of plasma working together. So it, it became the message from our point of view was that crop circles were really a message to go beyond the pattern itself and look at the frequencies and figure out what frequencies are being used to make these patterns and what do they tell us about how to make certain patterns. Um, and I also have some information that I brought here this place about some of the science that ETs use. And and I think we're supposed to be putting all that together. And we haven't, instead we've gotten caught up in arguments of conspiracy theory and Doug and Dave and all that. And of the 300 plus uh, crop circles that Levengood investigated, there were, I think there were something like 300 um, close to 350, 340 some. Anyway, the, uh, the there were only a handful that were fake. Right. So well, maybe- Patty, let me ask you, is it possible that even with some of the hoaxers, that they, unbeknownst to them, that they are being in some way influenced and directed by whatever, you know, Earth's consciousness or from these interdimensional light beings or whatever to 
create, even though they're, they're just stomping around with boards on their, on their feet, is it possible that they are being influenced in the same way to create crop circles, even though they're, you know, they're not spontaneous formations? You know, it's very possible that they're led by a higher source, but most of them, unfortunately, are led by their egos. And they post and they bloat the reality of how many crop circles they made. I won't name names, but I think that um, that system of, in England, the teams that are out making crop circles like to claim that they've made the great ones also and Kenny and I and Lefty all agree that the crop circles they researched, 350, most of them were real. I will say that most of the ones I was in were real compared to fake crop circles made by humans. But I do agree that humans sometimes are gifted with sacred wisdom. I will say that the whole time I was visiting England, I was in a state that was nothing like I'm in today. It was the most etheric chapter of my life, making the films with absolutely no training. I was dealing with other dimensional consciousness that helped me produce the films. They ended up uh, being completely honest because I didn't read other people's research. I didn't hang out with the people that claimed they were making crop circles because I don't find them very interesting. It's a distraction, much like a lot of the political stuff right now is a distraction when we need to be focused on the actual messages and the science. And the science has been hidden because it is an advanced technology, charged density plasma. When you use it with agricultural seeds, crops, biofuels, <clears throat> ultimately Penny and Lefty discovered that those seeds are growing 30 to 400 percent more food and biofuel per plant with up to 75 percent more nutrition per seed. This is the most important discovery about crop circles because this actual advanced technology, ancient technology, could help to bring our food supply back. I In mean, other words, if we, if we could create the same plasma... Uh, vortices that are creating these crop circles and increasing the seed yield within the crop circle formation. If we can recreate that plasma, we could, we could do that for ourselves. We could, we could, we could wipe out famine. Yes. But also speaking of famine with this charge density plasma frequencies in these seeds. And again, lefty did a little bit of dessert that made those seeds even more enhanced. They turned out that they could survive when weather was too hot, too cold, too wet, and too dry. Thus, Penny and Lefty referred to them as super seeds. Penny, I want to ask you, sort of following up on what I was talking to uh, Patty about before the break, and that is this uh, increased crop yield. Uh, you also alluded to this uh, inside crop circles, and that if we could figure out how to use uh, or how to duplicate the same sort of plasma vortices that are creating these crop circles, uh, we could, on our own, create or increase crop yield, re eliminate famine. What else do you think we could accomplish with uh, these with these uh, plasma ion vortices? Penny, are you there? Uh oh, yeah. Did we lose Penny? Yeah, here I am. You didn't hear okay. Me. Okay. Um, let me say it again. So one of the things that um, that I think is important to point out is it doesn't have to be a vortex. Uh, there are all sorts of what I'm going to call ex well, they were experiments, but I'm going to say they were different types of experiments utilizing different materials and different uh, kinds of consciousness, different states of consciousness. Um, and equipment that we experimented with, and you can impact the the plasma. That, um, let me let me back up a step and say this: every substance holds naturally a certain amount of plasma energy, a certain amount of energy 
in its plasma formation. When you can increase the amount of energy that that substance can hold and and keep that stable, then what you get is a change in um, what I'm going to call the energy state, which is literally a term that is, uh, well, we won't go into that. You just increase the energy state. You then change the characteristics and the interactions and the results of whatever that thing is, um, that is from what is usually expected to something that's totally unexpected. So when it comes to seeds, one of the, I think it's the country of Jamaica, said we're going to use this technology to develop all of our agriculture. And, and what they discovered was that the plants that had degenerated into the common forms we see today began to uh, present themselves, began to grow in the ways that they used to grow in ancient times back uh, in their earlier states, and that was quite a shock. Um, And so that's one of the things that I think is a remarkable ability. If if you change the energy in a substance, it's going to change shape, it's going to change characteristics, it's going to change resilience. Um, It doesn't, it'll hold that state for a very long time until something interferes with it, I, and even then, it may reorganize. That was one of the things we discovered was that plasma energy is self-organizing. And so what I think is important to understand is that humans are all reaching for higher consciousness, more expansive consciousness, more knowledge, more intuition, more uh, telepathy, et cetera. You can't do that. You can't do those things unless you can hold a greater amount of energy um, that's once you can experience that, uh, that's quite a remarkable change in your own consciousness. And it's a feeling state. So when Patty referred to, you can feel the difference way back at the beginning of our conversation. That's one of the characteristics of a higher energy state. You can feel the difference and you don't get fatigued and you don't run out of energy and you don't get sick and you don't fall apart and you don't degenerate, you regenerate constantly. So there's all kinds of ways that this technology could be applied. And we experimented with quite a few um, and actually wrote a patent that we never really filed. And so I still have that patent, but um, it's amazing what this makes possible, superconducting energies at room temperature um, on your kitchen. That's the holy grail. That's the holy grail. Patty, have, have you seen any crop circles which might be, let's say, schematics that would help us build some of this technology? Absolutely, yes. Um, in probably two or three of my films, the shift has hit the fan. I showed what happens when you spin a crop circle. Now, you've got a base pattern. It's a star with dots on the tips or something. You spin it, all of a sudden, it's a whole different pile of information. So, yes, I think crop circles need to be looked at, the image, as well as putting them in motion to see what they can do. So, absolutely, yes. And when I went looking for sacred geometry, I would print the crop circle on a piece of paper, stick a pin in the middle, and spin it on my bulletin board, and it was remarkable. Then I found a guy in Holland who was doing spinning crop circle images, and it was all right there. So the eye doesn't play tricks on us. Um, It really is showing us a lot of information. So these crop circles are not only scientifically able to bring our food supply back, but they're also delivering messages from the highly conscious earth herself. And the messages have been deciphered repeatedly by mathematicians when it's um, a mathematical fractal formation. It's obvious to them when it's, you know, different people in different works of life are going to recognize a crop circle differently than I might. 
And what I say is everyone's correct. You're going to get the message that's meant for you. There is so much information, and many of them have specifically told us, like 2002, the alien face and the disc. Right after 9-11, the crop circle showed up with an alien face looked like a gray and a disc that looked like it came out of a player piano, and the message was deciphered by mathematicians and computers as this. Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. Much pain, but still time. Believe there is good out there. We oppose deception. Conduit closing. What a message. Delivered from the earth after 9-11. Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken Mm. promises. And look at us today. Uh, Let's grab some calls here. Let's go west of the Rockies. Gina Maria is in Washington. Gina Maria, welcome to Coast. Hello. um, Love and peace and healing, and God bless to everyone and everything everywhere. Um, um, So um, on Art Bell show about 25, 30 years ago, um, they talked about a crop circle that was in the town of Coopville um, on Woodby Island in the state of Washington. Um, so the next day, my my daughter and my sister and I went to see it, and it was on a slope piece of land, so we could see the shape of it at the bottom of the hill when you looked upward. And um, if I remember right, it resembled a thermometer with other shapes and stuff. And now I think about maybe it had to do with climate change warning or something. Um, but um, anyhow, so I believe it was in wheat. We stepped inside the crop circle, and I felt the amazing energy of it, and then um, I also took some samples of the wheat with the blown out nodules, and I have them here somewhere. Um, my sister took pictures, and I've uh, heard about balls of light as in orbs in some fields of crops making these. Do you think it could be maybe orbs? And thank you. All right, Patty. I know you've experienced, you've seen the uh, the balls of light and the communication between them. Tell us about that. Great question. Yes, um, Penny explained to me what we are seeing when we see these balls of light or film them. Uh, in Crop Circle Diaries, I've got one in France and one in England. Uh, people haven't seen the one in France, but everybody has seen <clears throat> the, um, what was it called, a very simple formation uh, where the two balls of light lay a crop circle down in seconds. It's been debunked repeatedly by so many people, but lucky for me, I did um, get invited to Bear Cloud, a Native American's home, and he told me that he paid $3,000 to the man who told me it was fake, and that man actually on camera said, it is absolutely real. Those balls of light are the same frequency and quality as the Phoenix light. They are absolutely real. So what do we have here? Penny can explain it better, but at the base of a spinning vortex, Again, in my opinion, they're coming out of the earth typically in pairs, um, these vortexes of frequencies, and they spin until they get to the exact frequency to create that message. What I found was that they communicated in a split second uh, through what looked like a binary code on my film, and within seconds, boom, the field went down, and the entire pattern was laid Within seconds, you can see the balls of light moving across the field instant. And then you see another ball come over and check the field, and they all fly away in different directions. What they are is bases of spinning plasma fields that get to the frequency with so much heat that they light up and the human eye sees a ball of light. And that ball of light is at the base of a spinning vortex that's about to lay a crop circle down in seconds. All right. Uh, East of the Rockies, Jeff is in Mansfield, Ohio. Jeff, welcome to Coast. Hey, Richard, if uh, the uh, aliens eat the Canadians, uh, you're not going to have a show. That's right. I'll be the hors (laughs) d'oeuvre. That's very good. (laughs) Listen, I had a question that she already addressed, which was fantastic about the 3D alien and the disc next to it, which absolutely blew my mind. And if you haven't seen it, folks, get on the inner tubes and look at that. You will absolutely go bonkers. (laughs) I sure did. 
my question is this. <clears throat> These crop circles seem to all manifest themselves in the U.K. And why is that? Is there a hot spot there? And that's my question, and I'll take uh, your answer off the air. All right, well, Patty's going to disabuse you of that, and Penny probably as well. We hear about the ones in England, but they're all over the place, right, Patty? Yes, the epicenter of, we're going to say documenting them, has been in England for years. And I love it you asked this question because all of a sudden, I was going year after year after year. The farmers were great. They'd welcome us. Some of them would put out a tip jar to help them, you know, um, earn a little bit of money to pay for the crop that was stepped on by all the researchers. But ultimately, the farmers in 2015, 16, were starting to be told, actually 2014, uh, no longer let the researchers on. And I think because we were getting too much information, they had to block us. And then the farmers were told, you're going to lose your monthly stipend from the government if you let them on your property And furthermore, we would like you to mow out the crop circle, to destroy it with your tractor when you see them. So all of a sudden, the farmers became really hesitant with their warmth and their welcome, and it got really ugly. What did the earth do? What did the mother do? And again, I give her more credit than humans by far. She moved the epicenter to to France in 2019. It was incredible. All of a sudden, every crop circle in the Crop Circle Connector uh, library, which is where I go, CropCircleConnector.com, they tell you every crop circle with images that people have documented. And all of a sudden, they were in France, France, France. And there were so many of them. Finally, midsummer, England showed up with some crop circles. But they were really starved of formations in 2019. And then, boom. There was one in Poland that was so telling. It was a yin-yang formation where the paisleys matched, and there was a ball in the base of one, but the other ball in the base of the paisley had gone outside the formation. It was over to the right, depending on which way you're looking at it. But in my opinion, what I was looking at is the balance of the yin-yang, of the divine feminine masculine had moved into a new frequency, whereas the male dominant um, energies of Earth were being moved off of the center plate, and the divine feminine perhaps was coming back. Almost every crop circle in France in 2019 looked like a feminine goddess formation. Almost all of them were on a straight axis, and they had crescent moons and planets, round and curved on this axis. They all look like dresses or women with their arms up or entity humans with their arms up celebrating. And by the end of summer, I believe the count was 16 in England, 17 in France. But it was the only summer where I really saw it change. And then the messages became really incredible. 2019, we got the, um, what was it called? The Extinction Rebellion crop circle. It was this huge logo of the Extinction Rebellion, which we are living through right now. Patty Greer, Penny Kelly, stay with us. And uh, we'll get to more of your calls in a moment. So Penny, talk to me more about the the conspiracy to suppress uh, what you and William Levengood and Patty Greer are discovering about the true nature of crop circles. Uh, is, is it simply they, 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 whoever they are, don't want us to have the ability uh, to utilize, you know, the same technology uh, that's creating these these uh, crop circles to wipe out famine, or is there something else going on? I think it's generally this uh, attitude of uh, not wanting us to understand that everything would be changed by these frequencies, everything. Um, and I think that that the whole crop circle phenomenon is like a doorway into understanding frequencies, how to use them. They could be used in manufacturing. They're already making metamaterials. These are materials that will be unable to be seen by the human eye. It gives the material uh, invisibility. 
and unable to be seen by radar, by sonar, by all kinds of sensory or sensing communication type equipment. That's a big deal. Um, They can be used in medicine for healing. They are being used in medicine. You just reset the body to its original frequency set. They are used in agriculture. Um, They could be used in technology. I think they're already being used in many ways uh, that are kind of nefarious. Uh, And they don't want to be blamed for that. They could be used in architecture to make buildings that don't rot, that don't get mildew, don't get mold, all kinds of things. They could be used in communication. So all of that is big changes, but the powers that want to be are really intent on keeping that power, and I think they have interfered with even the Earth's ability to show crop circles. There haven't been many. Um, not nearly as many as there used to be, and it's easy to disrupt that process just by pointing uh, directed energy weapons at a particular piece of land and destroying its ability to organize itself and to have those kinds of crop crop circle um, plasma systems develop. So there's there appears to be a really, uh, I'm going to say, underhanded kind of attitude toward the whole thing. And I get really excited about all the possibilities, and and then nothing happens. So it's really discouraging sometimes. Uh, The wild card line, Jackie, is in Ramona, California. Jackie, good morning. Welcome to Coast. Jackie, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. Shout out real loud, Jackie. Go ahead. Okay, here. Is this better? Hello. Yes, there you go. Can there you, you are. Better now? Oh, yes, go okay. ahead. Well, thank you for having this guest. I mean, this is the most exciting thing I've heard, you know, in ever, really. And, um, and like, you know, what now? You know, once we know this information, because I've been really trying to, like, raise my frequency, which is really hard, you know? I mean, and um, I, from what, me, what I've kind of learned after this is just, like, try and concentrate always on like the possibilities and the goodness and you know and all this other stuff like you know in the government in the politics and stuff just kind of like let them let you know like notice it but don't let it get involved in it or you know like let it get you all upset um but can i just ask you uh, something about um this uh these flashing lights that um i saw in the sky um they uh so a few weeks ago, so a couple months ago, I'm always looking at the sky, right? And a couple months ago, I saw this light flash at me, and then I think I saw it one more time, and I just had the feeling that it was kind of like winking as it was flying by, but I didn't really know if it was true, real or whatever. And then just a few weeks ago, I was looking at the sky, and I had three flashing lights, right? Well, first one, then another one, and then another one, but that one, like, I could see, like, this disc behind it and it was just that kind of amazed me but the whole um this whole crop circle thing i always believed in them and um now you know i would just like to learn more about where to get the information and their messages thank you all right jackie thank you do uh penny uh, patty do you want to direct jackie where they can I, they could start with your films i suppose uh, patty yeah <clears throat> my crop my website is an easy one to remember it's crop circle films with an S dot com. And somebody Crop. wrote me today, so grateful to find you. I can't believe how hidden you are. And I do want to talk about the hacking and the hiding. Um, <clears throat> my career <clears throat> was incredibly fun, going in the crop circles, hanging out with the great crappies. Um, my best friend over there was Janet Osabard who ended up doing a whole series called The Fall of the Cabal. Really brilliant people are going in crop circles in England. And we come in every summer from all over the world. But the misinformation is the only thing that gets out in the papers, on the TV, and it is really sad. Why? Because they're scared of the truth. We absolutely have the truth about crop circles. I have no doubt when I met Penny, when I went in the lab, when I saw the research of Lefty, 
and took it to heart, I knew for sure that this is a real phenomenon, that there's a lot of people that are either egocentric or being paid to lie about it. But in my opinion, there's nothing more important as far as food supply return than these wonderful technologies that we've discovered in the crop circles, which you can see in my final film, Crop Circle Diaries. CropCircleFilms.com, I've got eight movies, seven of them discuss crop circles. And, and uh, uh, we don't hold back, yeah. And, and Penny, uh, direct us, where can we find out more about your work with uh, William Levengood and what you're doing now? Okay, I have um, written a book that is part of my Consciousness and Energy series, and it's Volume 2, New Worlds of Energy, and it's the story of my um, relationship with Dr. Levengood, his research, um, you know, how we met. He had started his research long before I came along, and uh, he actually heard about me because somebody had read one of my earlier books, and uh, he wanted, he invited me over. And so that book is available on Amazon. It's Consciousness and Energy, Volume 2, New Worlds of Energy is the title. And you can get that on my website. I have a website. It's pennykelly.com. All right. And we've linked up to that. At, we've linked up to that as well at coasttocoastam.com. So if you go to Coast to Coast and under tonight's show notes, you'll yeah. find both Patty and Penny's uh, websites there as well. All right, Patty, I got to run. I got to wrap this up. But Patty, uh, thank you so much. Penny as well. Patty Greer, Penny Kelly, terrific conversation tonight. Thank you so much, both of you. 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 The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.